Hey everybody, uh, this uh, long lesson, sorry, uh, is transversals and parallel lines. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com. This is an integrated math 2 lesson. So how can we prove and use theorems about angles that are formed by transversals that intersect parallel lines? Okay, so these lines are, are not parallel, but we still have a transversal. So a transversal, here's a transversal right here, that line T. The transversal is a line that intersects two other lines or more in different points. It has to be different points, okay? And then we're going to talk about all these angles, angle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that are uh, formed by the transversal. So corresponding angles are the angles that are on the same side of the transversal and on the same side of the intersecting lines. And, and uh, boy, that's a terrible definition, but that's what our book's given us. So this is what I'm talking about, you guys. Imagine if, if line P and line Q slid down together and they became one line. Can you see angle 1 sliding right down on top of 5 and 4 sliding right down on 8 and 2 and 6 sliding together and 7 and 3? Those are the corresponding angles, okay? So those are what are corresponding angles right there, okay? Same-sided interior your angles. Well, think of inside as interior. So inside these two lines right here, and they're on the same side. So like four and five are same-sided interiors. Three and six are same-sided interiors, okay? And we can call them SS or SSIs, actually. I'm okay with that with the angle symbol. Okay, alternate interior angles, okay? Alternate means they're on the alternate side. So like four and six and five and three, they're alternate interior angles. Now, even though four and three are on alternate sides, these guys are called a linear pair because they make up this line right here. Same with five and six. They're called a, a linear pair right there, okay? So four and six are alternate interiors. Five and three are alternate interiors. And then um, alternate exterior angles are the ones on the outside that are alternating. So one and, and seven and two and eight are alternate exterior angles, okay? And then, all right, so let's talk about parallel lines. Or parallel lines are in the same plane and they don't intersect. So here are the lines L and M are parallel, and we write them with those, uh, those straight lines like that. So L is parallel to M, and usually cursive uh, lowercase letters means lines, okay? So line L is parallel to line M, okay? And we use the arrows to show that they're parallel. Now our textbook is cheap enough that they can't do the, the redness on there, so my old textbooks did red and blue and purple and all that stuff. But not yours, you guys. Yours is black, so it's all, um, you'll see a black arrow right there, and, but they do have fancier arrows than I do. Okay, so, so the arrows mean the lines are parallel. So when two lines are parallel, and you got a transversal shooting through them, then, then the same-sided interior angles are supplementary. So 3 plus 6 equals 180. Supplementary is 180. 4 plus 5 equals 180, okay? And then alternate interior angles are congruent. So 3 and 5 equals 4 is equal to 6, okay? Alternate exterior angles are congruent. So 2 and 8 are equal. 7 and 1 are equal. Alternate exteriors, okay? Corresponding angles are congruent. Correspondings are when the lines slide together. L slides right down to M. So 2 would slide right down on 6. They're congruent. 3 and 7 are congruent. 1 and 5 are congruent. 4 and 8 are congruent. Now, when the lines aren't parallel, all of this doesn't happen. The lines have to be parallel for all of this to happen. Okay, what about same-sided exterior angles? Okay, so here's the trick, you guys. When you got parallel lines, if the line, if the angles look like they're congruent, then they are congruent. Okay, so if one is an obtuse angle, and the other is an obtuse angle, then they're congruent. If one is an obtuse angle, like two, and five is an acute angle, okay, they're not congruent, so they're supplementary. Okay, so if they look congruent, then they're congruent. If they don't, then they're supplementary. Okay, so same-sided um, uh, exterior angle, so like one and eight. See, they're on the same side, and they're exterior, same-sided um, uh, I'm sorry, 
alternate exterior angles, they're congruent, okay? Like this one right here, alternate exterior angles, eight and two are congruent, one and seven are congruent, but same-sided exterior angles, they don't look congruent. One's obtuse, one's acute, they're supplementary. Here, same-sided interior angles, this one's a, a obtuse, this one's acute, they don't look congruent, so they're supplementary. So they're either congruent or supplementary when the lines are parallel, okay? When they're not parallel, all that doesn't happen. Now here, these lines aren't parallel, but we can still name them, okay? So one and five, what kind of angles are one and five? Okay, imagine if I can take this line and slide it right on top of this line right here. Okay, one would slide right down to five, so they're corresponding angles, okay? Two and eight, two and eight, they're inside, they're on alternate sides of the transversal, alternate interior, interior inside, four and six. Four and six, they're on alternate sides and they're outside, exterior, alternate, exterior. Five and seven, okay, five and seven is old school. They're vertical angles. Now, vertical angles are congruent no matter what. I don't care about lines being parallel or not. Vertical angles are always congruent. So even though we don't know anything else, if these lines aren't parallel, I do know that five and seven are congruent, six and eight are, one and three are, four and two are. Okay, two and three. Here's two and three. Okay, these, this is an old school one. These are called a linear pair because they make up a straight line. Okay, straight lines, linear, and there are two of them, pair, linear pair. Okay, three and eight. Where's three and eight? Three and eight are called same-sided interior angles. I'm good with this shortcut, SSI with the angles symbol. Okay, so in the figure, lines A and B are parallel. Okay, let's mark that. Okay, got to mark that. Okay, then all the math magic happens. They're either congruent or supplementary. So find the measure of angle VTU. If PQR is x plus 40, so we're going to put in at PQR x plus 40 right there, and VTU, VTU, we're going to put in 22 minus x, okay? Let's do that right there. Okay, those are called uh, same side, I'm sorry, those are called alternate exterior angles, and alternate exterior angles are always equal. Now again, if the lines aren't parallel, this doesn't work, okay? So set them equal to each other, add 22 to both sides, subtract x from both sides, x equals 62. Now that's not the answer, because it says find the measure of angle VTU. So VTU is this 2x uh, minus 22, so we'll plug in 62. Okay, when we do that, we get 102. Okay, now that now that we know that the lines are parallel, 102, 78, 102, 78, because these form a linear pair, they're straight line, lines are 180, okay, lines are 180, or vertical angles, okay, so 102, um, this is 102 corresponding angles, 102, 78, 78, okay, all right, anyways. In the diagram, A and B are parallel, okay, answer each. So it says it's given that PRS is 9X, okay, that's written right there, and WV is 22X plus 25, okay, that's written right there, okay. Why is uh, uh, PRS congruent uh, or equal to, okay, the measure of PRS is equal to the measure of RUV? Okay, let's look at that. So PRS, that's this 9X right here. RUV. Okay, why is this angle congruent to this angle? Okay, imagine if I can slide this line over, this angle would go right here. They're called corresponding angles. So when parallel lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, so it says RUW and blank are supplementary. So RUW and this angle right here, because it forms a straight line, and straight lines are supplementary. They're a linear pair. So angle WV are, are supplementary. Okay, so, so if they're supplementary, what's that mean? Well, that means they just add up to 180 right there. So we'll go ahead and substitute the value of X in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and this is going to be 9x right here, okay, so so solving for x, we have, uh, let's just slide this 9x over here, I don't know if I can do that, if I just slid that over right there, so 9x plus this angle right here equals the straight line of 180 right there, okay, so when we get that, we get um, uh, 31x plus 25, and then subtract 25 was th is equal to 155, and divide by 31, you get x equals 5. 
Okay, so it says uh, substitute the value of x, and we're going to go ahead and substitute that in, and we get um, uh, to find the measure of angle uh, WV, because that's what we're looking for right there. So we're going to put in uh, uh, x equals 5 right there. So when we do that, we get uh, 22 times 5 is 110. 110 plus 25 is uh, 135 right there. Okay, all right. So here in this diagram of this gate, uh, the horizontal bars, here's the horizontal bars, uh, they're parallel, and these vertical bars are parallel also. So this bar and these two bars up here are parallel, and then these uh, four bars going down are parallel right there. Okay, so find the values of x and y. All right, now remember, all the math that happens with parallel lines. So what I'm going to do, and you'll get used to this, you guys can't see it with all of that right there. So let's highlight these dudes right here. Okay, so I got these two parallel lines cut by this transversal makes this angle and this angle congruent to each other. So this 12x plus y equals 126, okay? All right, now this has an x and a y. That doesn't be, that's not very helpful. So let's do this right here. These parallel lines cut by this transversal makes these alternate exterior angles congruent, okay? So this one's 3x plus 2y, and this one's uh, equal to 36 right there, okay? It's really hard to see it when you're looking at that, okay? So just highlight it. There's parallel lines cut by transversal, okay? Do your math with that. There's parallel lines cut by another transversal, okay? So now we got a, a system of equations, and we've been doing these forever, okay? So what we're going to do is, uh, since these are both two y's right there, then we can uh, uh, subtract uh, the bottom equation from the top equation, 12x minus 3x is 9x. Those cancel, and when you subtract those, you get 90, so x equals 10 right there. Okay, so now we know what x is. Plug in x e either to this one or this one. I like smaller numbers, you guys, so we'll plug it in right there, and we get y equals 3. Okay, all right, you guys, that's, that's it. This is going to be a two-day lesson, so... So there's the first part. This will be on the first day, and then and then uh, this is going to be on our second day. All right, you guys. I know it's a big one, but take care. We'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow.